guys, back at it with another review. This time we've got the latest Yonex Ezo 98 in the 2022 model. All signs seem to be pointing in the direction that this may be Denis Shapovalov's new racket replacing his V-Core SV95. I'll give you my thoughts on possibly why he's made the switch and why the characteristics of this model can provide players something new if you're not already an E-Zone user. Throughout the video, I'll also compare the E-Zone characteristics to other 98 square inch models and the V-Core 95. This review is more targeted to those who never played with E-Zones, but if you're a typical user, I hope that you find some similarities and also some nuances to decide where whether this is worth looking at. If you do like the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram in the link below. These videos take 30 to 50 hours to make and these small things can help the channel grow, which will allow me in the future to have access to more rackets and other equipment. Just a quick background on my experience with E-Zones. E-Zones have never really suited my game style for whatever reason. And the only racket I've really, really liked and kept long term from Yonex was the V-Core 95 from 2018. That doesn't mean I think their rackets are bad, but most of them just did not fit the bill and what I wanted from a racket at those times. Anyway, let's dive into the specs. It is a 98 square inch racket with a 16-19 string pattern with 8 mains in the throat. Comes in an unstrung weight of 305 grams, a strung weight of about 323 grams, and a balance point of 6 points headlight or 32.5 centimeters. The swing weight is averaging around 318, which is about the same as 2020's model, and the stiffness rating of 65 is 1 point higher than the 2020 model, which was 64. This model's bean width is 23.5 millimeters, 24.5 millimeters, and 19.5 millimeters, which each section is slightly thicker than the previous model as well. For string setups and modifications, I tried three different string setups all at the same tension at 48 pounds. But if you want to see the slight differences in the modifications that I tested with, I only added bits and pieces of weight here and there. You can check out the overlay for the full information. So for feel and stiffness, although the stiffness rating has measured slightly higher from the previous versions, they have been able to make the response of the racket overall softer. There is an increase in ball pocketing compared to the previous version, but at times the two versions can feel quite similar depending on the string that you use. But if you string the 2020 version too high of a tension or too stiff of a string, it could become slightly more brassy and shock heavy. If you are overly sensitive to stiffness for the 2022 model, when I strung it with a firmer polyester string, towards the end of that session, I did find myself shake out my wrist a little more, so I would just be careful. Overall, I don't think most people will typically have any problems, but but I would just be on the weary side if you already know you suffer from something. Compared to the 2020 version, I feel that it is much improved in this department since I sold the previous one when my wrist was continuously finding problems from the vibrations. Although people found a lot of issues with the E-Zone Tour in terms of wrist pain or tennis elbow, I'm pretty certain that the response of the racket was softer than the standard model. But when you combined it with a relatively higher swing weight and used the wrong string setup, you definitely were going to run into some kind of problem. With the 2020 2022 model, you're looking at something a bit closer to the Blade V8 in terms of plushness, but there is more ball pocketing and dwell time than the Blade. The Blade is a little more faster and direct off the strings, but to be honest, I think the E-Zone is actually quite muted, even more so than the Blade V8. And I have already said in my review of the V-Core 95 2021 that the vibration dampening mesh technology has moved the Onyx rackets too much into the direction of Wilson Countervale, though it's nowhere near as bad, but more muted than I prefer. If you if you are overly bothered by muted rackets, then maybe this is not the racket for you, or you will need to string with a much more crisp string as long as your wrist and elbow can handle it. For playability, it doesn't affect me too much though. I can still play very well with muted rackets like the Pure Strike, and I also used to main the Blade Countervail. This is because I'm completely reliant on my own swing. If you're the same as me, I wouldn't really worry too much about the feel. That being said, feel in my opinion is probably one of the racket's weakest attributes. There is some mushiness to the outer string bed which makes it harder to track where you hit it sometimes and if you're very reliant on feel that is probably going to put you off but purely plushness itself I believe there will be a 50-50 split so not necessarily a pro or a con but more of a preference.
In terms of power, when I tested this alongside the 2020 version, the power differential can be very hard to tell given that I had almost identical specs. I would give the edge of power potential to the 2020 model, which I also had to sell due to the uncontrollable power at times. From a power standpoint, if you're comparing it to the wide range of rackets that exist like pure drives and pure errors, this iteration of the E-Zone is by no means a power racket. I would describe it as a control oriented power racket. I reckon there is actually more power in the current version's V-Core 98, so if you want more free power from a 98 square inch racket but with some control built in, you should look at the new V-Core 98, Pure Strike 98 or Pure Error VS. In terms of the E-Zone's power potential, there is still much more to give compared to pure control 98 square inch rackets like the Radical Pro, Blade V8, Prestige Pro and even the Clash 98. The power, it's there for sure but it's unlocked by proper swing mechanics. If you need a racket that provides you power but you don't have a full and fast swing, perhaps consider the E-Zone 100 instead. If your game isn't based on power but you have solid technique, this actually may serve as a pretty user-friendly control racket for a variety of paces and use of angles. Control is where I believe the racket really improved to help my playstyle. I found that the 2020 version for whatever reason was very unreliable in certain situations. I felt the string bed could be very erratic and unpredictable. I ultimately had no trust in the racket and coupled with the wrist issues it left my bag pretty fast. I had the string, the 2020 model, above my 48 pound tension but when already having wrist problems it was a no brainer for me to stay away from the racket. Luckily for me the 2022 version, my usual tension works perfectly so you don't have to make any adjustments to your normal setup I believe. If you're actually not an all out aggressive player, I imagine these unpredictable shots wouldn't cause you the same problems they did to me. If you're already dialed into your E-Zone 2020, then the differences could be minimal. In fact, you may enjoy the more powerful and crisper response from the 2020 version, if anything. For me personally, there's something about this version that includes that confidence inspiring ability to swing out that I normally talk about only in some of my very control focused rackets. And this is not really the kind of racket that you would expect it from and the differences is that this has far more forgiveness and power than those ones like the Ultra Pro, the Pro Staff 97, the Vehicle 95 and the Radical Pro. There's enough spin, enough pace, enough control, plenty of racket head speed to allow me to manipulate the racket however I want, whether I want to load up on the ball or when I'm pushed out far wide on defense. It's so easy because of its maneuverability where I still generate a solid swing and follow through on the ball when I'm late or not balanced. But the 2022 model has inconsistencies in its own way and I think it only happens if you catch the outer edges of the frame or if you don't swing right through the ball. You might experience the ball dying off the string bed and dropping really Really short all of a sudden and that's where I think the feel of the racket can fail if you really rely on it. Normally if this happens on more unforgiving rackets like a pro staff you will feel a little bit more harshness from the outer string bed when you miss the sweet spot which will allow you to make readjustments to make sure you're hitting the center. But with the E-Zone the response is not jarring at all and actually quite plush which is nice almost like the gravity but you'll get an illusion that you didn't miss hit that badly. Normally on rackets that are muted like this like the strike or the blade you you'd still hit a half decent shot but it seems just to lose quite a bit of control sometimes and kind of drop off the record like you're not expecting. In the maneuverability department, if you're already accustomed to the E-Zone, especially the previous version, you probably already have a good grasp of how fast this racket can move in a lightweight package. The overall experience is impressive. You kind of get the Blade V8 swing speed in stock form, but a lot more power, stability, and spin. For me, the Blade V8 was at a huge disadvantage against heavy hitters without extra weight. The only other racket that was this fast, this light, and this stable at a low swing weight has to be the V-Core 95. The ease of use of this combined with the newfound control makes this an extremely good rhythm racket. Once you find your swing it's so easy to replicate over and over and you'll find really great consistency because it allows you to make last minute mid swing adjustments since you have so much more time and control of how the racket moves in your hand. The racket moves so freely that it's all about how you want to play with it instead of how other rackets require you to adapt to its style. The good thing about this E-Zone is that it's versatile for different stroke styles. Whether you have a modern forehand and try to produce more spin or if you use an eastern grip and you want to flatten out strokes with a big loopy swing coming behind the ball or giving it a bit of a slap. On the one hander there is enough speed and stability for its lightweight build to get the swing around so there are aspects that work very well but I can't say it will compare to the V-Core 95 in this area. If the stock specs aren't your cup of tea and you tinker around with it I believe there is some decent potential there to unlock. 
spin potential is nothing special since the racket pockets the ball quite a lot and the pocketing doesn't provide any extra assistance with biting into the ball and doesn't grab the strings for long enough. But there is still adequate spin potential for players who want to generate some shape to create a good safety margin over the net, allowing you to maintain very good consistency as I mentioned, because of the combination of power and spin doesn't become an overkill. There is a balance between those aspects coupled with the control that helps you not to overheat when you are maintaining a fast swing and when you really load up and rip the ball you will be rewarded with exactly what you put into it. So if you are someone who possesses the ability to snap aggressively underneath the ball only in the case that you're really trying to leverage your top spin to penetrate the court with extremely heavy balls then you'll be better off going with the v core 98 for that kind of play style. The E-Zone's top spin is used more for rhythm and consistency than spin penetration. As for launch angle, I think it is very neutral for a 16-19 pattern. On the V-Core 98, you can see a noticeable higher launch angle. Even though people think the string density of the two rackets is different, but the spacing is actually extremely similar, if not near identical throughout the whole racket. It's probably more to do with the V-Core 98 being a bit stiffer, the response being more crisp and direct, and the way the racket is constructed in terms of its shape and grommet system that will help with the extra spin and launch angle of the V-Core. So in terms of spin potential, from highest to lowest, I would list them in this order on the screen and although I haven't tested them I'm sure Iga's Technofiber Racket and the Pure Aero VS would be up there with the Extreme Tour. Slice is purely amazing for my swing. The maneuverability and stability gives me access to rip right through the ball no matter what position I'm in, fully balanced or run out wide. Almost every single slice on the run, no matter my positioning, I can dig it deep and low. Both offensive and defensive slice on this racket is so easy to use. I've never been able to slice this effectively with a 1619 pattern and a racket this light of a package. Just from the get-go, it was the easiest shot I was able to hit effectively apart from the serve. Speaking of serves, E-Zones for me and I'm sure for many others are in the top 5 for serving. Even though I haven't used an E-Zone for almost 1.5 years, I was still able to pick up this racket and immediately blast some of the best serves I've done in some time. The beam being thick on the upper portion of the racket is what gives you straight up plow through on the ball despite its low swing weight. But its insane aerodynamics, especially with the thin throat, allow you to leverage so much off the hand when pronating that you can generate a great deal of power without using your legs. Admittedly, due to my ongoing Achilles issues, I mostly avoid pushing off my ankle too hard these days so I don't flare up my injury, but the ease of use still makes it serve like no other racket. Add in the extra level of control provided with the new model, from the get-go I could hit all my spots like it was coming back to an old favourite. Pace and penetration is effortless, sliders out wide or on the mark, kick serves, or someone who has very good technique should be able to perform really good kick serves. For forgiveness, for 98s that I've become accustomed to, the E-Zone's forgiveness is in the relative ballpark range of what you would expect from most other popular 98 square inch rackets. Most are fairly easy to use if you are a high intermediate to advanced, with the exceptions being the extreme control rackets like the Radical Pro or the Prestige Pro, which are much less forgiving. So not much for me to touch on in this category, but I would still look out in regards to hitting outside the sweet spot and how it dies off the string bed. For stability, at 310 swing weight, if you're good at timing and clean ball striker, you actually get some decent stability and above average in this kind of weight and swing weight range. At 315 swing weight, you start to get a little bit more help in the mistimed strokes and off-center shots, extra plow through on serves and power from grand strokes having the racket maintain its positioning through ball contact. At 320 to 325 swing weight, you will likely start finding a comfortable range between maneuverability and stability. And although I didn't try this racket yet in any of my higher swing weight setups like 330 and above, unless you're pretty strong and have a very good swing, for me the cons will start to outweigh the benefits because this racket is better for me, when it's at its fastest, I don't need the rock solid stability to get away with defense. If you time the balls relatively well, you're rewarded with above average stability at lower swing weights. And this is evident in someone like Kyrgios who is returning 200 to 215 kilometer serves with a 324 swing weight E-Zone, showing that it's purely timing and skill and this line of rackets can hold their own even at the professional level. But at the end of the day, all play styles are different. Some people might like to weight this up to 350 swing weight and be totally content. It's just purely for my playstyle and my opinion.
I think feel is relatively nice for volleys, but this is the only area where too low of a swing weight has a pretty noticeable effect on the stability of the net. I think here, if you're someone who loves coming to the net, you'll need to definitely add some kind of extra weight to help. But I like it due to its maneuverability, easy to get around, and it's really great for lunge and reflex volleys. To sum up how it compares to the old 2020 version, if you own the 2020 version and you like it, no arm pains, I'd say stick with your current model. Unless you feel like you could use a little bit less power and more control and wanted a softer version with more ball pocketing. I think unless you're really someone who has a keen eye for detail, you might not even notice there's a difference at all. But for me, there's definitely enough of a difference in terms of how it matched up to my playstyle. When I picked up this one, there was a completely different feeling that I had about it. So why did Dennis Shapovala switch to the E-Zone in my opinion? But I think the playability reminds me of the V-Core 95, except that it's easier to use and more forgiving. But don't take that comment at face value, there are certainly differences. What I'm simply referring to is what the V-Core 95 provided to me that made it so good. That was the high maneuverability, the accessibility of spin and power, the confidence inducing control without overheating, and the versatility of the racket. Is it as direct or as precise as the V-Core 95? No. Does it provide as much spin potential in terms of actual RPMs? I don't think so. Is the response and feel as good? Definitely not. But what you do trade off for those is an even better serving experience with that probably being the most important shot in the game and better forgiveness with easier access to power. There's an element of this frame that you can swing out big, flat or heavier top spin and have the feeling of complete control of your shot, whether you need to hit your angles or paint the lines and still stable enough in a light package like the V-Core 95 that you generally struggle to find a little more often with most lighter weight rackets that are not head heavy or very low swing weights. So when I say it's like the V-Core 95, it's somewhat of an easier version in terms of the play style. For me, the difference is I would never take the V-Core 95 into my most difficult tournament matches. Personally, I don't think there's any chance that I would ever be able to win against those kinds of players with the V-Core 95. I would need to be very switched on to be able to beat those players. The E-Zone on the other hand is something that I could literally pick up and play at near my highest level right off the bat and that is without me being dialed into the frame and not traditionally an E-Zone user. If you're a huge advocate of the V-Core 95 then maybe I would doubt that you might like this racket due to the inadequate feel that it provides. But if the V-Core 95 is too demanding for you to play your best tennis with, maybe it's worth trying this out. Who do I think this racket's for? This racket is at least for intermediate to advanced players with full strokes and pretty good technique and swing mechanics. It may be better suited towards aggressive players, but I also think it would work very well for someone who swings aggressively but uses the speed of their swing to maintain great consistency, so it's actually versatile enough to be used for someone who just wants to play defense and just keep the ball in as often as possible. If you use thick 100 square inch rackets like the Pure Drive or Pure Error and you are comfortable with the and need the extra power then I would probably stay away from this racket if you are in that transition period of your game where you think that you're improving a lot and you need something different I think this racket serves a purpose for you to transition to something that is more advanced but not crazy advanced that's where I'd kind of slot in the speed MP and the previous versions of the blade these are the kind of rackets that have a more controllable power source that aren't overly powered but have injectable power and if you come from a totally control oriented frame, want some more forgiveness, some more free power, but still want a great level of control, also a great option for you to look at as well. This kind of racket is what I expected and wanted from the 2020 version. I wanted something light, easy to use, ability to use my power as an advantage, but controlled enough for me to add some extra variety in my game, where also the three best shots in my arsenal all benefit from this racket construction. If you're not already an E-Zone user, this is a worthy test at the very least, but there's only few rackets I would count on my hand that I would recommend to a variety of different players that can fulfill many different aspects, and this is one of them. That concludes my review of the EZO 98 2022. If you want to see the overall rating that I give the racket, stick till the very end. My next upcoming video will probably be the comparison between the VCOR 98, the EZO 98 and the VCOR Pro 315. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time.